In this video, we're looking at the thermochemical equations practice sheet. And so for each problem, we are supposed to use stoichiometry to answer the question. First, with any thermochemical equation, if it's not balanced, we need to balance the equation itself. And so up here, we have an unbalanced equation. And so I'm going to first balance hydrogen by putting a 3 in front of H2, um, and then I'll balance the carbon by putting a 6 in front of carbon. And so now I have a balanced equation, so I can answer the question of how much heat will be transferred when 5.81 grams of graphite react with an excess of H2 according to the equation shown above. Um, and so to do this, I'm just going to have to use a little bit of dimensional analysis um, so that I know that every time six moles of graphite or carbon react with excess hydrogen, I get an energy, I need an energy input of 49.03 kilojoules because that's a positive delta H value. So I know that this is an endothermic reaction. So I can actually go ahead and answer part B. This is going to be endothermic because the delta H value is positive. It doesn't have a negative sign, so that must mean that it's a positive delta H value. Um, so I'll put a positive there to remind us of that. Um, so how much heat will be transferred? We'll start with that 5.81 grams of graphite. We'll convert that to moles. And we'll then I'll use our mole ratio in the equation, our ratio with our delta H value, to figure out how much energy is actually transferred here. So let's start out with that 5.81 grams of carbon or graphite. I'm first going to go from uh, grams of carbon to moles of carbon. And I know that one mole of carbon um, is on, the mass is on the periodic table as 12.01 grams. And then we can go from moles of carbon to our kilojoules from our delta H value. Um, and to get this second conversion factor, we need to look at our balanced chemical equation. We have six moles of carbon that are equivalent to 49.03 kilojoules. And so we'll use those exact numbers. Um, that's six on the bottom, six moles of carbon, and then 49.03 kilojoules on top. And now, we, when we finish this, we'll end up with our number of kilojoules, which is, of course, the amount of heat energy. So I'll do 5.81 times 49.03 divided by 12.01 divided by 6. Um, and I'll plug that into my calculator real quick. 5.81 times 49.03 divided by 12.01 divided by 6. And when I did that, I got 3, 3.95315. And I do need to round that to three significant figures because that was what was given in my problem, is three sig figs. Um, and so I'll go ahead and round that to my final answer. Um, and then 3.95315. kilojoules is our final answer here, and I'll go ahead and box that in. Uh, now last but not least, or well actually I guess for this problem, we should write our answer on the line 3.95 kilojoules. And then last but not least, part C says to draw the energy diagram for this reaction. Um, and so we'll draw that in the box down here. We know that this is an endothermic reaction, so our reactants are going to be down at the bottom here, our um, six carbon and our three hydrogen. Um, and then our products will be at a higher energy, so that's our 1C6H6. Um, and now we know on the y-axis of an energy diagram, we put our delta H change. Uh, and then in this graph, we want to show what that actual delta H change is. So we'll put our arrow pointing up to show that energy is being absorbed through this reaction process. And the amount of energy, exactly, delta H equals 
positive 49.03 kilojoules. And so there is our energy level diagram. In this next problem, we once again want to start by balancing out our unbalanced chemical equation. Um, I noticed that I have an odd number of chlorines on the product side, so I need to double that value so I have an even number so I can balance it out. So I'll put a 2 in front of PCL5, so now I have 10 chlorines, so I can do 5 times 2 gives me 10 chlorines on the reactant side. Um, and then to balance out the phosphorus, I will simply put a 2. So every time I react two phosphoruses with five chlorines and get I get two PCL5s and 866 kilojoules of energy being given off. I know that the energy is being given off because the negative sign in front of the delta H value shows that this reaction is exothermic. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in part B, exothermic. I can kind of sketch my energy diagram um, now that I know the reaction is exothermic. So I know on my energy diagram, on the y-axis, we have increasing enthalpy. Um, and then we know that our reaction is exothermic, so our reactants are going to be at a higher energy, 2 phosphorus and 5 Cl2. And then our products are going to be at a lower energy, so 2PCL5. Uh, and so energy is being given off in the process of the reaction. So we'll mark our delta H value, um, and that is negative 866 kilojoules. 866 kilojoules are being given off. So there is our energy diagram for the reaction. Now we just want to figure out exactly how much heat is transferred when we react 1.8 grams of chlorine with excess phosphorus. So we need some dimensional analysis to do this. We'll start with our 1.48 grams of chlorine and of course I know that this is Cl2 because we need it to be one of our reactants. Our Cl2, our chlorine's a diatomic. First we'll go from grams to moles. One mole of chlorine is about 70.9 grams. I took the mass in the periodic table and multiplied by two. And then we need to use our mole to kilojoule ratio. So we know that every time we have a mole, some moles of Cl2, we get negative we need to get a certain number of kilojoules, and that's negative 866 kilojoules. Um, and that is per every 5 moles of Cl2, we get negative 866 kilojoules. So now we just need to solve this by typing this into our calculator. 1.48 divided by 70.9 times negative 866 divided by 5. And when I did this, I get negative 3.61545 uh, with a bunch more decimal places on the end, but I know that I'm going to round to just three significant figures here. Uh, so my final answer will be negative 3.62 as the 5 is going to make the round, one round up and negative, that is the number of kilojoules. Um, and so we'll box in that answer, and we can also put it on our line up above, negative 3.62 kilojoules. So our last problem on the front of this page, we have a combustion reaction. So we're going to need to start out by balancing our chemical reaction here. And remember, when we balance combustion reactions, we want to leave oxygen until the end because it appears in multiple places in our chemical equation. Um, and so I'll start by balancing carbon by putting a 2 in front of CO2. Um, then I will take a look at the hydrogen. I have five hydrogens plus one, so six hydrogens. So I need to put a three in front of H2O. 
And now let's take a look at the oxygen. So if we kind of combine these, we have two times two, four oxygens coming from the CO2, and then three oxygens coming from the H2O, so that's seven total oxygens. Um, and that would be problematic because I can't and multiply anything by two and get seven, but I already have one oxygen over here, um, and I need it to add up to seven, which means I need six more. So I can actually balance this just by simply putting a three here. Um, and then last, I can fill in a one in front of C2H5OH. And so this was actually a fairly simple combustion reaction to balance. Um, and so we didn't need to double anything. We didn't need to use that trick at all. Um, it ended up working itself out. Um, so the combustion reaction, anything burning, I know is going to be an exothermic reaction, but if you weren't sure on that, um, just look at the sign of the delta H value. It's a negative delta H, so that means the reaction is exothermic. Um, and let's go ahead and sketch our energy diagram again this time. I think it's sometimes easier to do that first. So we have enthalpy which is uh, variable H on the y-axis. Um, we know that an exothermic reaction, the reactants are going to be up top, so we're going to have uh, C2H5OH plus 3O2. And then our products are going to be at a lower energy, um, 2CO2 and 3H2O and then energy is being given off in this to the surroundings. Um, so let's go ahead and put in our energy change, our reactants, and we're giving off energy as we go down to the product side of the reaction. And we are giving off exactly negative, we're giving off 791.4 kilojoules, that negative sign indicating that the energy is being given off to the environment or to the surroundings. So now we have our energy level diagram. Let's go ahead and calculate out the exact amount of heat released when 4.77 grams of ethanol react with excess oxygen. So we'll start with 4.77 grams of C2H5OH. We'll go from grams to moles. And then we'll go from moles of ethanol um, to kilojoules. And I should probably write out my substance here, C2H5OH, C2H5OH. Oh, not to C2H5OH. That's why it is important to write it out. We're just going to kilojoules in this top step. Okay, so now that we have our dimensional analysis set up, we need to put in some numbers uh, for our kilojoule mole step, we can look at our equation. One mole, burning one, just one mole of, of ethanol, uh, releases 791.4 kilojoules. Um, and then we need the molar mass, one mole. Um, we'll add up our molar mass down here. So C2, so 12 times 2 is 24. 1 times 6, 6, and then oxygen, 1 times 16 is 16, so 46 grams per mole. So now we just need to multiply and divide this out. 4.77 divided by 46 times negative 791.4. And when I do that, it gives me 82.0647. Um, and of course, if you didn't round your molar masses, you might have gotten a very slightly different answer. Um, you maybe you got 81.9 or 82. Point one, um, but as long as you're close, it's okay here. And we just, of course, need to round our answer to correct sig figs. Um, so we'll keep three sig figs. Um, and so this actually rounds to 82.1 kilojoules. Uh, and of course, this does have a negative sign in front of it, showing that the energy is being released here. And so here is our final answer, 80, negative 82.1 kilojoules.
All right, there we go.